for this section that is uh, from uh, uh, Carla Patricia Garcia Carbello. She is uh, from Hort America, remains Brackford, Texas. And uh, her presentation is on photoperiodic treatment to accelerate flowering in North America strawberry cultivars. Okay. Thank you for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. So uh, most of the information that I will be delivering today is based on uh, research uh, done uh, with Dr. Cherry Kubota. Uh, she's right now at the Ohio State University. There we go. So I think we all know that strawberry is very sensitive to different environmental variables. And uh, flowering uh, induction is not uh, a deception. So uh, we must learn about how this plant is, um, is having a response to different environmental conditions and how to trigger flowering in a strawberry. So this is important because right now we have a, a tool that is very useful. Uh, we have greenhouses and we, we also have now plant factories. So it's important to learn how this plant develops inside of these conditions. We are very used to grow plants in open fields, but right now we're able to learn how this plant performs inside growing system where we are able to manage uh, different variables. But first, uh, let's explain a little bit about the photoperiodic response of plants and specifically in a strawberry. So uh, a plant uh, can have a response to photoperiod, which is the amount of hours that the plant is exposed to light. Plants can be categorized as long day, short day, or day neutral. So for a strawberry, we can have a long day cultivars, and uh, they can have an obligate or a facultative response. So facultative response is when a plant can flower on the short day and long days, but will flower earlier in longer days. So that is a facultative response. An obligate response is when the plant will only flower under long day conditions. And short day is when the plant is flowering under short day conditions, which would be something below uh, 14 hours for the period. And we can also have a facultative and an obligate response. For a strawberry, many of the cultivars, they have an obligate short day response. And now we have also day neutral cultivar, cultivars. So these are cultivars that doesn't have any response to photo period. So they will flower on the short days and long day conditions. The thing is that we have many cultivars of a strawberry that, that they are already classified. And uh, the thing is that the classification was made just in open field performance and genetic background. So now uh, we know there is evidence that some of the classifications, now we can, that we can study the plants inside of greenhouses and it can pay more attention to the environmental variables, uh, some of the plants, uh, they really don't have the classification that they have right now. I mean, the response that they, they're supposed to have to photo period. So in order to target uh, a specific production timing uh, and also to optimize the use of lighting in plant factories, we really need to understand how to trigger flowering in a strawberry. So in plant factories, we're, we're paying for light, right? So we really want to, to know the amount of light that the plant needs in order to flower. If we can save energy, of course, we'll, we will do it, right? So, uh, and in uh, greenhouses, uh, we can target the specific production windows uh, that can be good for growers. So for example, in the United States, there is a very specific window where most of the, uh, of the production is done. So in here you can see, oops, sorry. So in here uh, you can see we have a lot of production in these months. But if you pay attention to the, what should be the winter window production, we don't have a lot of production. And we actually take a lot of uh, strawberries from uh, different countries like Mexico, for example. So this can be a really good option for a grower to target a better price on the market. And the way to do it is by producing inside of greenhouses, at least in the United States. So the main goal of my presentation is uh, to let you know and expose the key physiology of a strawberry to develop technology that will help, help us to optimize the conditions in growing systems. So how many growers do we have in here? Raise your hand. 
growers, scientists, well, most of us are scientists, good. So I think it's, it's really, really good to, to know uh, how to develop, uh, how, how to deliver information for growers and also to scientists. So my job today is uh, to try to expose how to test for a period, uh, how to apply for the periodic treatment. So if you are a science, scientist, how, how to apply the treatments in order to study different cultivars, because we have that necessity to, to start to, uh, to do research under different cultivars to get to know the real response to photo period. And also uh, speaking a language that growers can also understand how to use this treatment inside of greenhouses or plant factories. So the thing is that we don't have right now a protocol. There is not a step-by-step -step that we can follow on how to test for a period. So my job today is uh, to deliver information about research that is already done, uh, where we can know how to test for a period and which are the environmental variables that we need to pay attention when we are studying this or when we are applying the treatments. So first, uh, and we learned this yesterday, Plant can have an interaction with temperature uh, when we are testing for a period. So it's really important that when you are testing for a period, you should maintain the same temperature between all the different treatments. If you are testing different cultivars under different uh, treatments to get uh, the specific response to for a period. And uh, if you're a grower and you are following a recipe that uh, Soma got published, you also need to pay attention to the temperature that was used. So for the experiment that I, that I will present, uh, we, test, uh, we tested different cultivars from the United States in North America. Uh, we had uh, short day cultivars uh, and current classified uh, day neutral cultivars. So first, it's very important to grow the plants before starting treatments under conditions that won't promote flowering. So if you have short day plants, of course, you will grow those plants in long days. And if you have day neutral plants, you have to grow them in either short day and long day conditions. And uh, this, this slide is very important because in here you will learn how, how to test a photo period correctly. So photo period can have an interaction with temperature and also with uh, light. So it's very important to have uh, no, difference, no, no significant difference between treatments in terms of temperature and also the light. So for example, for these uh, treatments, we maintain uh, the plants inside of the greenhouse for seven hours. Uh, so all the plants under the same light uh, we did different treatments for short day plants. We did 11, 12, uh, 13, and 14 hours. And for day neutral, we did uh, 8, 11, 14, and 17 hours. So the plants were exposed seven hours in the greenhouse. And we create the photo period by exposing the plants and moving the plants to a grow chamber, exposing them to a, a lamp, a photoperiodic lamp, that will deliver very, very low light intensity. So we know plants respond to photoperiod from two micromoles, which is almost nothing of light. So in here, we create the rest of the photoperiod with this lamp, uh, which is a photoperiodic lamp. And um, that, that way, we didn't have different, different uh, DLI or amount of light per day per treatment. So it was very, very low light intensity. We were able to extend the photoperiod, but without uh, extending the DLI significantly. So this is an example of a photoperiodic lamp. So if you are interested in testing photoperiod uh, or, or delivering a treatment to your plants, only uh, trying to trigger a photoperiodic response, you can use this lamp. So this lamp is very low light intensity, of course won't promote growth. So it's not useful if you want to push your plants for growing. It's uh, just only used to trigger a photoperiodic response if you want to promote flowering or inhibit flowering. And we already know also that far red is really important for flowering, so this lamp also has a little bit of far red. So once we did the treatments for eight and 10 weeks, that is something that we know that the, the length of the treatments in order to trigger a response should be between uh, eight and 10 weeks. After that, we did a dissection of the apical meristem and we develop uh, these stages of development in order to know uh, the stage of development of the apical meristem and the response to photoperiod. 
So when you have a, when you have a flower that you can see, of course, that means that these plants start to flowering earlier. And if you have a less developed shoot apical meristem, that will mean that the plant just start to flower. So by the eight week and 10 week uh, and the different experiments, we did the dissection. And uh, for the short day plants, we found out that there was no, no response to photo period after 13 hours. So in here we are confirming that the threshold for inducing flowering in short day plants, at least for these North American cultivars, is uh, 13 hours. If you use 14 hours for the period, the plants won't flower. And we also corroborate the results uh, by counting the runners. So this is vegetative growth. And in here we can see that uh, under the longer days, we have more vegetative growth. And here is the results for the day neutral cultivar. So this slide is also very interesting. On the x-axis, we have the treatments. So we did eight hours, 11 hours, 14 hours, and 17 hours. And on the y-axis, we have the development of the shoot apical meristem. So we have different cultivars in here. Let's focus on San Andreas, which is the one with the, the, the correlation, the, the higher correlation. So you can see in here that by the week we did uh, the, the dissection, under the treatment with, with less hours of light, we have a uh, shoot apical meristem that is less developed. And in here, under the longer days, we have uh, a flower that is way more developed. So in here, of course, we did a statistics analysis to check the correlation, and um, we can conclude that this, this is not a day neutral cultivar. This is classified as a day neutral, but in here, at least for the temperature that we manage, um, we have a facultative long day response. So it, we have the same, the same result for Monterey and also Albion, which is a cultivar that is very important uh, right now in North America. It's very used uh, by growers. So this is just a way uh, to let you know, I know that in here we have other cultivars. Uh, so this is only to let you know that it's really important to go back and recheck uh, the conditions that we use and uh, how can we promote uh, the photoperiodic response of different cultivars. So, um, just making a summary of the results, uh, for short day plants, we learned that the threshold is between 13 hours and 14 hours for the period. So if you want to induce flowering, uh, you, can, you can move your plants, and this is done in Japan, uh, you can move your plants from the greenhouse to uh, environment with no light uh, in order uh, to trigger flowering. And uh, this treatment should be uh, around eight weeks, and after that, the plant will be able to flower. And uh, for, the, for the long day plants, uh, or day neutral plants, at least for the experiment that we did, uh, we can conclude that a photo period that is longer than 16 hours can accelerate flowering. Of course, having a DLI of uh, 17 and also temperature of 17 degrees Celsius. So this is what we, what we did for the experiment. And just remember that uh, you can have interaction between uh, the light and uh, temperature when testing photo period. So uh, if you want to use this recipe, you need to, to use the same temperature and same DLI. So uh, why is this information now uh, interesting? So this is kind of old research, but we, we wanted to put this out again because now we have more production in greenhouse and now we have plant factories. When we did the research, uh, the, there was not a lot of research done in, uh, in uh, indoor systems. So it's really important uh, when we uh, use artificial lighting to know how to optimize the use of light. For, for indoor production, uh, I mean plant factories with just uh, artificial lighting, uh, we need to know uh, how to optimize the use of light. We're paying for light, so we really want to know how uh, to save money uh, by producing and making more profitable, uh, profitable projects. So the harvest index is the ratio of edible product to the total biomass. So we know for indoor production, we have right now uh, a lot of indoor production for leafy greens. But what is different uh, for strawberry? So we have a lot of research right now about uh, indoor production of strawberry. It's a little bit more difficult because we don't eat the whole plant. We cannot sell the whole plant, we sell the fruit. So in terms of price, uh, it's, it's 
really different what we see on the results. So it's, it's more easy to make a profitable uh, project uh, by, by using leafy greens than using uh, strawberries or tomato, for example. So this is why the optimization of the use of light is really important. We really need to learn how uh, to, to induce flowering, uh, how to use light intensity and light quality inside growing systems. And in here I'm also including greenhouse because we use su supplemental lighting sometimes. So based on research that is published right now, and this can change tomorrow because <laughs> this is underdeveloped, uh, we can assume now that uh, we can use uh, light intensity for a strawberry between 200 or 300 uh, micromoles per square meter per second. And again, I mean, we're still on develop of this information, so this is what is published right now, uh, but probably could, could change tomorrow. So this is what we know right now. And about light quality, um, as we learned uh, this morning, far red is very important. So in terms of the use of artificial lighting, uh, we need all the photons hitting the leaves because uh, is, we're paying for light, we want the light to be on the plant, right? So that is why uh, this, the stretch that, uh, that the, the presenter was speaking this morning is very important because we don't want the, the leaves to be overlap each other. So if we have a longer peduncle, uh, we will have uh, better light incidence in the plant. So far red, that is why far red is good uh, for indoor production. And also because the peduncle, which is uh, the, the thing that attached the, the fruit to the plant, uh, is, is better if it's longer because we can harvest the fruit better. And uh, also it will help uh, to maintain uh, the, the fruit in good condition because when it's really short, it stay inside of the plant and it gets bad uh, more quickly. So far red in 5% is what we recommend uh, for a strawberry. So based on research uh, that is published and shared with Hort Americas, uh, we recommend uh, to use uh, this, this light spectrum, which is a full spectrum, including uh, 5% of far red. So this will provide uh, the far red for flowering and also uh, to uh, induce uh, that stretch that we usually recommend inside of growing systems. So, in conclusion, it's really important to pay attention uh, to light quality, uh, light intensity, and also for the period. So we really need to optimize the systems, and we really need to, to build that bridge between the scientists and also the growers to deliver the information in the correct way so growers can use the information that we are um, uh, making in labs uh, as a tool in greenhouses and plant factories. And uh, before finishing, obviously I want to thank to all the people that provide the data uh, for this presentation. And uh, last slide, very important, because uh, we have in here a guide that we develop in Hort Americas. So my job is to make uh, information for growers and people that want to learn a little bit more. So feel free to download this guide. So this is a small book uh, where you can get to know everything to grow a strawberries hydroponically. Uh, you will learn about the substrate, irrigations, and greenhouse management. So that's it. <laughs> I'm ready for questions.